a silverback gorilla actually has a lower total testosterone concentration. And look at that beast. Look at it. These guys, these animals are insane, right? And they're mega strong. They can probably bench press thousands of pounds, can probably easily beat all of the world records if they were to train for a powerlifting meet. Still, their total testosterone levels are not that high. Vigorous Steve here, have you ever wondered where we rank amongst the animal kingdom regarding our total testosterone concentrations? Well, I have. I was doing research for an upcoming video regarding the overall decline of serum testosterone levels over the last couple of decades, and then it hit me. What about the animals? Where do they rank amongst the humans? What are their total testosterone levels? What about silverback gorillas, or grizzly bears, or African lions? So I went down the rabbit hole, pun intended, and I did a ton of research and I found a lot of scientific evidence regarding the total testosterone levels of all kinds of animals. Now, this list is not going to be complete because, of course, there's millions of species of animals on this planet. Still, all of the popular animals are represented. Before we get into the video, I want to know from you guys what your favorite animal is. What animal do you identify most with? And then you can do a head-on-head -head comparison comparing your individual testosterone levels to the average testosterone levels of your spirit animal, so to say. Leave a like on this video, another comment for, to help boost the algorithm, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Let's get into it. Now, again, I had to do a ton of research, guys. And you have to keep in mind that, that is, this is going through all kinds of scientific literature that is performed over the last couple of decades. So some of the scientific literature is going to be reasonably old. Some of them are from the 1960s, some are quite recent from the last couple of uh, years, and they are using all kinds of different methods of analysis to establish total testosterone concentrations. So I focus solely on scientific evidence that has been performed in the wild, and otherwise I will specifically mention that some of these total testosterone levels are coming from animals kept in captivity, in zoos, for example. Keep in mind that the methods of analysis to determine total testosterone concentrations in serum aren't always specified in the scientific evidence that I was able to review. Sometimes they specifically mention that they use electrochemiluminescence immunoassays or chemiluminescence microparticle immunoassays to determine total testosterone concentrations. But I haven't seen a single study that actually uses liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry testing, which is generally what we recommend for humans to do their blood work with. Right, that's the most accurate way to check your total testosterone levels. So I haven't seen that in any of the studies, probably because it's a lot more expensive. And sometimes the sample size reaches into the thousands of different animals. And sometimes they only determine the total testosterone levels of a single animal or maybe five at most. Keep in mind, a lot of this research has been done in the wild. Sometimes they can't even take an actual serum sample. They have to go with blood that is found on a wound, for example, and then they use a seven feet pole to kind of scrape a little bit of blood off the wound and then run that through an ECLIA or CMIA test that is portable. So there's a lot of variability, right? Keep that in mind. Sometimes they use spikograms per milliliter, sometimes they use nanograms per milliliter, but I converted everything to nanograms per deciliter to make it a little bit more relatable and easier to understand because that is generally speaking the reference range and the concentrations that we see on our own blood work results. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have the time yet to convert the nanograms per deciliter to nanomoles per liter. I might still do that, but I'm not entirely sure if that's even going to fit on the screen. So don't hold it against me if you don't see nanomoles per liter on the screen. I'm just going to focus on nanograms per deciliter. Again, that's what most of the world uses nowadays. So where do we start? Let's start talking about humans first, because that's what we're all familiar with. So I purely focused on human adults, Homo erectus. The reference range for adults is 240.0 to 950.0 nanograms per deciliter. And keep in mind on some reference ranges on some countries, it goes up to 1100 nanograms per deciliter. In other countries, it's only 871 nanograms per deciliter is what I see here in Thailand on my own blood work results. So the reference range is kind of very uh, based on country to country. And of course, in nanomoles per liter, that's going to be a completely different set of values. So this is the reference range for human adults, males, of course. We're going to focus on males in this video. And of course, these ranges are going to change as you get older. That's why we have testosterone replacement therapy. Nowadays, animals can choose for testosterone replacement therapy, albeit 
that their total testosterone levels go sky high in many cases during the mating season. But for humans, it's basically always mating season, right? We're always ready to mate. We don't have to wait to a particular season when food is aplenty because for us, our species, we always have food aplenty, or at least in the developed countries. So we have quite average and quite stable total testosterone concentrations over the year. So I took all of the ranges from the animals. I specified the mean, if that was available in the scientific literature. And then sometimes during the mating season, I was able to find very, very high, <laughs> incredibly high total testosterone levels. So I'll put that on the screen or I'll mention it specifically. Let's just go down the list. We're starting with the highest total testosterone concentrations ever recorded in an animal of a single bull shark. And when you do your uh, Google search, what is the highest testosterone levels in an animal? You'll see that one a single bull shark caught off the coast of the United States of America had a whopping, a extreme, a super high total testosterone concentration of 35,800 nanograms per deciliter, which is insane. This is probably the highest recorded total testosterone level of all of the vertebrates on this planet. It's still not as high as Dallas McCarver's total testosterone level of 55,000 nanograms per deciliter as documented in his autopsy report. Again, Dallas McCarver was probably taking performance enhancing drugs and this bull shark, I don't think he had access to injectable testosterone. So I think this bull shark wins. Now, this is not the average of sharks, right? Usually the average is a little bit lower, but still, when you look at the averages of sharks, they're still quite the highest of all of the animals on this planet. Nurse and reef sharks have a total testosterone level of approximately 83.1 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. Sand tiger sharks are a little bit higher, 140 to 10,340 nanograms per deciliter, with a mean total testosterone concentration of, let's say, 2,860 nanograms per deciliter. And other sharks, right, pulled together the male lemon, bull, hammerhead, black nose, sandbar, black tip, and sharp nose sharks. They range anywhere between 2,300 to 7,850 nanograms per deciliter. Mean currently unknown. I wasn't able to determine that from this study. Still, these ranges are incredibly high. So, if you want to be another animal with the highest testosterone levels, choose a shark, bull sharks specifically. Now, that being said, I wasn't able to determine the total testosterone levels from great white sharks. There was a study found, and I'll link all of the studies down below, where they determined the testosterone levels in uh, tissue, for, in the fins, for example. But that doesn't really represent what the serum total testosterone concentrations are going to be. So unfortunately for great white sharks, I wasn't able to find it. And don't ask anybody to do that study for you because great white sharks are really, really scared. And unless you want to go swim with them and take their serum samples, we'll leave that entirely up to you. Now, when it comes to Komodo dragons, one of the biggest reptiles living on land, they have a range of 640 to 1600 nanograms per deciliter during the mating season with a mean testosterone concentration of 1,325 nanograms per deciliter. So this is already very representative of what you see in teenagers. They go up to about 1,400, 1,500 nanograms per deciliter. But again, we only have that for a couple of years, and Komodo dragons have this for the majority of their adult life. Royal Bengal tigers, 304 to 1,802 nanograms per deciliter with a mean total testosterone concentration of 1,084 nanograms per deciliter. This is somewhere bordering on testosterone replacement therapy for humans. A ram, a mean total testosterone concentration of 667.5 nanograms per deciliter. And fifth in this list, and again, it doesn't mean that we're fifth of all of the animal kingdom, just fifth on the list that I was able to generate. And keep in mind, I only spent two days comprising this list. If I were to spend a month doing research, I'm sure we could get a different ranking, but we're probably going lower down the list. Humans, a reference range of 240 to 950 nanograms per deciliter. And based on the most recent scientific literature, I was able to determine that the mean total testosterone concentrations for humans, Homo erectus, is 466 nanograms per deciliter for men aged 20 to 50 years old. So that's pretty much prime time for human males, after which total testosterone levels certainly decline. That's generally speaking the most fertile period of your life as a male. So let's take that as a mean 466 nanograms per deciliter, meaning that we're ranked fifth among this list. Now, again, it's not the most complete list. 
So keep that in mind. I've done a ton more research on other animals, but when we go down the list, we see a lot of our favorite animals. A silverback gorilla, for example, the gorilla gorilla, has a mean total testosterone concentration of 413.7 nanograms per deciliter. So for all of you guys that want to be a silverback gorilla, you would probably feel androgen deficient <laughs> with that total testosterone concentration. I mean, how many of you guys feel a little bit lethargic, a little bit tired, don't get good pumps, don't get good sleep, then you do your total testosterone level, you see that you're 450 or 500 nanograms per deciliter, and now you're trying to convince yourself to go on TRT. Well, a silverback gorilla actually has a lower total testosterone concentration. And look at that beast. Look at it. These guys, these animals are insane, right? And they're mega strong. They can probably bench press thousands of pounds, can probably easily beat all of the world records if they were to train for a powerlifting meet. Still, their total testosterone levels are not that high. Again, not so much scientific literature, so keep that in mind. I can only work what I was able to find on the internet.